Preparing to delve in three, two, one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Delve. My name is Nathan, and Alex is busy having a long discussion with his computer about why it won't work. In the meantime, though, I am actually not alone. I'm very happy to be joined by none other than Will Jones from Encounter Roleplay. Will, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Yes. I, I must ask, just right up at the front, the term... And I don't yes. know if the, if you came up with this term or not. <laughs> D&D sex god. Is that <laughs> just... So, icon. I'm an icon. I'm an, icon. Sorry, I don't claim sorry. godhood. Uh... Okay, not claiming godhood. Okay. <laughs> not yet. Do, do, you still, do you still maintain that title? Or... Uh, I, I do respond to that. Uh, okay. To, <laughs> to that name. Okay. Um, okay, good. But yeah, you know. Just... Yeah. Well, we all need a title. It felt, I mean, it felt appropriate. That's, yeah. that's all I can say. Yeah. And you know what? If you're going to have a title, you might as well have one as good as that one. you right, got to have right. something good. <laughs> well, uh, I'm really happy that you were able to come on. We're getting into that time of year. We are. It's a little spookier. You know, the leaves are falling, and, uh, you know, uh, the black cats are crossing your path, and owls are looking at you funny. And yeah. usually, <laughs> around that time... Uh, we start thinking about, like, Halloween and about spirits and, and about stuff that's a little bit scarier. Uh, the reason I really wanted to have you on is you are no stranger to Call of Cthulhu and running games in that system, correct? That is correct, yeah. Yeah, uh, I've been playing Call of Cthulhu and uh, being a keeper for Call of Cthulhu for probably uh, a couple of years now. Yeah, maybe two, three years. So I've been doing it for a little while now and I'm really enjoying it. Sure. Uh, explain uh, keeper for people like me who don't understand the terminology. <laughs> it's that's basically your dungeon master, game master okay. role. Uh, yeah, All right. uh, keepers of um, I, I want to say it's eldritch lore and Kel uh... <laughs> keepers of eldritch lore. Okay, yeah. Th there's always an interesting term uh, for a lot of systems, and sometimes when people like say it, I'm like, I think I know what that is, but I'm gonna check. <laughs> yeah. Well, what is this guy keeping? I, I wanna <laughs> yeah. Know. <laughs> what are we keeping? Are we keeping it close to the vest? <laughs> well, that might make sense. The thing that interested me about Call of Cthulhu, I can't say that I've actually played in the system myself. Actually, I had happened to tune into, I think it was your first season of Call of Cthulhu. Like, at, at, it happened to be the very last episode of that run. Right, right. And there was a part, and I think it was Lindy, was actually, like, she, her character had, like, gone into a bar and sat down, and there was a character in the corner, and you were like... Everything for a price. <laughs> that sounds like something I'd say, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and I was sitting there kind of like going, I have no idea what's going on right now, but it is enthralling. <laughs> it is amazing. I don't know what's going on, but I am suitably upset inside <laughs> thinking about this. But the, the whole thing about like Lovecraft and Cthulhu is this, this idea of cosmic horror. Right. In general, like, let's start with just what is cosmic horror? That's a good question. I suppose cosmic horror is something like the fear of the giant massive universe and in the Lovecraft world, the fact that it's all horrific alien creatures which at one point have been on our Earth and they're now asleep, but sometimes they wake up and <laughs> and then <laughs> things get really, really scary. And you want um, them to go back to sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it, 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 really it's a little more sort of existentially terrifying than necessarily sort of like you know chainsaw massacre horror. Uh, or, oh know, yeah, or a, or a killer, you know, on the loose. Um, although often there are killers on the loose as well. But you mm. know, I, I guess it's the the sort of feeling that humanity itself is one tiny insignificant dot in the universe, and mm. that greater powers actually control us and the world and our that our understanding of it is um so small that when you do realize something about it then you lose your mind because the the sheer breadth of you know the universe and the horror of reality is, is sort of too great for 
for humans to know. There's knowledge that we should never know. Um, and that's where sort of Lovecraft draws on that sort of cosmic nature. Yeah. Right, right, right. It's it's just the immensity of the situation that you're in that really lends itself to the feeling of almost helplessness. Right, right. I mean, sort of yeah. like that. and I don't know if you've ever sort of like <laughs> watched a nature or, or, or a sci-fi documentary, a space documentary. Oh, yeah. Um, and then you just think, oh, my God, we are so tiny and insignificant and my life yeah. is sort of nothing. And then Lovecraft sort of takes that idea and then, you know, throws horrific monsters in it. Uh, that, <laughs> you know, it is great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. It's, it's that it's the little blue dot thing, you know, right, like, right, you know right. imagine that tiny little point from like, you know, millions and millions of miles away. You know, that's that's everything right yeah, there yeah. that we understand. And that's always scary, you know, like that that yeah. doesn't never this doesn't never stop being scary. At least for me, I always find that stuff sort of existentially a bit a little terrifying. Um It's a little unnerving, yeah. You're, yeah. You're, you're you're right. You're 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 correct. <laughs> At one point I'm like fascinated by the whole thing because it is so vast and it is so big. Right, right. But it, everything that's always fascinating also comes with a certain air of um, terror. Right, right. <laughs> it's, it's the unknown. It's just that, like, I've seen cosmic horror, like, obviously Lovecraft kind of popularized the idea of, of cosmic horror, but it is hard to do sometimes just because of that idea of the breadth, the scope yeah. of what you're building. So when you're running a, a game of Call of Cthulhu, how do you actually build a narrative around that as a theme? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I, and you're right, it is tough to do. And that's sort of the main, uh, when Lovecraft was writing and when various other authors were sort of using the Lovecraft universe and working upon it. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the main sort of criticism of it is that Lovecraft sort of never explained what the monsters were. And that's where things get sort of tricky to grasp onto with, with a game like Dungeons and Dragons or I don't know, traditional fantasy role-playing games. You know what a goblin looks like. You've got a pretty good idea of what a troll is. Um, you've got pictures of them everywhere and you can fight them and kill them. With the Lovecraft stuff, um, often as small unnerving descriptions go a lot further than really fleshing out exactly what it is you're looking at because mm. as in a lot of Lovecraft's works, when these people are sort of writing, describing the horrors that they've seen, they're unfathomable by nature, which is frustrating in a way, you know, for contemporary readers at the time, because it's like, okay, well, what is this thing that I am looking at? But it's the fear of the unknown that's, that's much scarier. Your imagination is far far more powerful than me describing to you what something scary looks like. You know, that, that's where I sort of start off is thinking, okay, well, what are the things that really are quite scary? And as well, your imagination running loose, your fear of the dark, your fear of, you know, what might be lurking out there. And then it's suddenly, you know, coming upon you. And so, you know, there's, there's, there's also that human element in Lovecraft's work, where it is humans often trying to summon these creatures or, you know, connect with them somehow. So there are elements which you can describe, you know, there are villains that you can very much see, human elements uh, to it, which can be a lot easier, uh, more easily connected to. Yeah, so I think it's a little bit of both. You know, it's a little bit of making sure there are enough human elements to be able to be seen and understood, and then just going with some really weird stuff that um, doesn't actually make sense a lot of the time. I'll try and write things that don't really make a lot of sense when it comes to creatures and horrors and monsters, because. Uh, well, these people are going insane, right? They're losing their minds. Right. And so try, trying to recreate what it's like for someone to lose their mind is difficult for a dungeon master or a keeper. <laughs> and a lot of the time that's, that's on the players. The players do a lot yeah. of the work with that stuff because they're role playing their characters. They start making irrational decisions. They start doing things that don't make any sense. They start seeing things that aren't there. Um, and there's a lot of playing on different senses. Uh, that, that comes with that. Aside from just sight, you know, you start smelling stuff. You start hearing things that shouldn't be heard. Um, um, okay. Yeah, so, so horror plays on different senses in, in, in that way. And it's, it, like I say, it's tough to recreate, but 
Well, yeah, and I mean the the descriptive aspect, though you, you kind of figured that that's par for course in most games. But right. I, I like I, I I see what you're talking about the aspect of actually describing things not just in what you see, but actually what you experience with your other senses because yeah. it's like a full sensory. I don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> right, right, right. I don't understand it with any of my senses. Yeah, I, I mean the fear of the unknown, fear of the dark. I I totally understand that. That seems to be like a a very primal fear that you can tap into so building atmosphere around that helps out a lot for you yeah yeah I, i'd say so and like i say it's more about leaving blanks uh rather than fleshing out a whole scene or a whole room or a whole creature and then sort of leaving that up to the players to sort of let their imagination go with it and and that's scarier for them you know that's that's more intense and especially if you're into it and you're sort of you're trying to be scared you've got to go in with the the mindset of okay well this isn't necessarily about this guy you know that dungeon master keeper trying to scare me it's about all of us coming into this sort of willing to be a little bit scared you know willing to you know dim the lights down a little bit and turn on a candle and uh you know think about what could be spooky because we're all sort of in this together and then sometimes you know the players start coming up with stuff that sort of scares me and there are situations where I'm like, oh, that is, you know, that's, that's horrific. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using that. <laughs> I'm, right, I'm right. still on that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I was, I was curious about, like, how do you keep players in the right mental state for that sort right. of game? It's, I think it's a slow, a slow build. Um, that's the, the thing that good horror movies, good horror stories, uh, you know, any kind of horror media does well is that sort of slow burn. Um, where at first things seem normal, and then there are little things that start not making sense, and they sort of follow these mysteries, um, these little threads. And a lot of Cthulhu is sort of puzzle-solving, mystery-solving, um, trying to get to the bottom of something, and then only at the very end does uh, the true, you know, the true horror, the true reality become, you know, laid bare. Uh, and so it works quite well with that sort of slow burn up to a, a grisly end rather than a grisly end sort of being thrown in your thrust in your face straight away and all the way through because you get tired of it. Um, <laughs> right, right. Do you kind of go in with the idea that the characters are going to pretty much are kind of SOL? Yes. <laughs> yeah. They're doomed. Yeah, they're, doomed. They're, they're all doomed from the start, I oh. think. And, and that's that's the thing with Lovecraft, you know, uh, books and and work is that, well, they're all doomed from the beginning you know from the start that this isn't going to end well for any of them and the players if they're you know if they're aware of that they also they'll play into that you know they they know that they're they're doomed it's kind of fun actually to to play a character that you think well actually isn't going to necessarily make it out of us maybe they'll make out of it alive but they're certainly going to not make out of this intact <laughs> um which is very different from a D D campaign in which you think your characters are going to you know live succeed beat the the villain and you know uh, and win um there isn't really winning in a call of cthulhu in that in that same way there's surviving which is about as close as you can get to winning and running away is always the best option uh rather than standing to fight yeah i like uh, that option because these things can't be fought you know they're they're, they're alien in mm -hmm. nature they're they're supernatural cosmic creatures that we can't you know, understand, fathom, we can barely, you know, sense them. It's only because they choose to be sensed by us that we have any, any you know, grasp on them whatsoever. Right. So, you know, it's it, it's a supernatural element of uh, that's, you know, like that alien, you know, the original alien had going for it, where you yeah. barely see the monster, you know, you, you, mm -hmm. you have interactions with it, you hear it, you smell it, you can see things that it's doing, but you don't necessarily see it the whole way through and it's only right until the end where you finally you know see the monster and are horrified um yeah. by it by its true nature and it's scarier when you don't see stuff you know it's uh it's like when you're alone in the dark and you hear a noise in your house and you think something might be out there right and then your mind starts playing you know games of you and you start thinking oh my god is this you know some my house is there something in my house or a ghost out there you know yeah um and that stuff starts to really un scares me. Yeah, uh, right. Uh, it's like, oh, oh, God, did I lock the door? Is right, the door, right, right. And, and then you're like, oh, no, the door isn't locked. Did something happen? <laughs> like, did something get in? And then you have right, to, like, right. yeah. I've had those times. I've had those times where, like, I, I come home and, like, the door isn't locked. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure that I just didn't 
remember to lock the door, but then I have oh, to like go I? through the yeah. house a little bit and like, <laughs> yeah. is anyone here? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get surprised by this. Yeah, no, that is uh, that is a terrifying thing. It's um, it's like where everyone's saying, you know, like. I, I, somebody who was on a, one of our live streams uh, had said, you know, it's not, you know, trying to terrify somebody with like somebody who's wielding a knife. Imagine right. if if everything in your room was just moved to the left one inch. Yeah, that's a great that's, that's a great uh, that's a great <laughs> point. Yeah, I mean, that's there are little things which are scarier than things being thrust in your face. And oh, yeah. there are certainly moments in you know, in Call of Cthulhu, where there are, there, there may be a, a, a knife-wielding maniac after you, yeah. and that's when the adrenaline starts pumping and you've got you to run. But those sections are sort of few and far between, and you can enjoy them. They don't get overused if you're doing it, uh, right. if you're doing it well, I think. So yeah, you know, it, it less is more with Call of Cthulhu, with, uh, I think with horror games in general. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's the little things that really, that really play on your mind and, you know, and keep you up at night. <laughs> So in some ways, uh, one of the keys to actually running a Call of Cthulhu game is to, like, hold back. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You, you, you know, you can take that, that title, the Keeper, you know, the Keeper of Secrets, mm. uh, if you will, you know, to, to heart and, and think, well, you know, I'm not going to tell you what you see. You know, I'm not going to necessarily, yeah. necessarily tell you what's going on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, letting players come up with their own ideas and theories about what's happening. Yeah. Um, because, you know... These entities, you know, these these gods, these elder beings, they don't think the same way as we do. They don't want the same things that humans want. And so they don't have human motivations. And so they don't have to act rationally or do things that would make sense. They're insane by nature. When you look at them, you lose your mind. So, right. um so that stuff can really start, you know, messing with people. Uh, yeah. When they're like, but this doesn't make any sense. You know, what's going on here? And then they start thinking and talking amongst themselves about what might be happening. And, mm -hmm. and that stuff gets kind of scary when you start building up these conspiracies and ideas between a group of people. That's when it gets really fun. D and then you just let the players do the work for you. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, think a lot of, I think a lot of the load bearing is on the players. Yeah, sort of holding back a little bit on information. Right. Uh, can be, you know, not so much to frustrate, you know, you're not doing that to sort of be a, be a dickhead and, and you know, <laughs> you know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you when you walk into a room, if there's a, you know, a, a chair for you to sit in, I'm not going to say, oh, I don't know what's in this room, you know, <laughs> but you know, when right. it comes to the, the right. more eldritch arcane stuff, that's when you can sort of yeah. uh, have a little bit of fun and, uh, I'll tell I'll yeah. tell you that there is a chair in the room. I won't tell you if there's something inconceivable sitting in it right now. Right, right. <laughs> there's the difference. Yeah, that's it. I do know that there's some of it. You can tell me a little bit more about how this plays into Cthulhu as a game. Yeah. Is that there's a really strong focus on like solving mysteries. Like all of Lovecraft's mm. heroes are detectives and they're right. they're investigators. They're always looking for something like that. How how does that that the the aspect of like solving mysteries how does that actually play into the game yeah i mean i think the mysteries sort of are the main thrust of your your narrative in terms of getting you know players from from a to b you know whether they are detectives investigators by trade or if they're people thrust into a situation which turns out you sort of have to i mean the one of the main themes about lovecraft and like you say the detective stuff is sort of the human desire to find out the answer to something mm. uh, often leads us, you know, curiosity kills the cat, you know, often leads yeah. us to these these dreadful ends. But when you become obsessed where we just have to know what's happening, you have to know um, what's going on. That's when, yeah. um, you know, you can really start going places uh, narratively with it because then the characters start thinking, okay, well, if this mystery is you know, being solved, where can we go from here? And what is this other question? And mysteries lead to more mysteries often. Right, um, right. And, and keep your narrative sort of chugging along quite nicely. And you can go, yeah, lots of places with it. Yeah, you you have almost like mysteries that you can solve until you can't solve them anymore. 
right? <laughs> <laughs> right where yeah. he, but then you still think you can solve those mysteries, so you keep trying to. <laughs> <laughs> right, and solving the mystery yeah. doesn't doesn't end in happiness necessarily. No, <laughs> no typically it does not. It does not work out well for people in, in general. Yeah, I I did find it really interesting. Like yeah, every every Lovecraft story that I've really heard, and even when I I played the game that came out last year, Call of Cthulhu, like your yeah. your your characters are are always tasked basically with solving some kind of mystery that you probably should not be trying to solve but you're driven right. to do it anyway yeah if it were me i i just wouldn't have gone like <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like there, there's the, fir the first scene in, in the call of cthulhu uh video game was was like yeah somebody comes into your office can you go to this island that's like called blackwater i and it's like just from right. the name it, you showed me a horrific painting and you said there are terrible things going you know what i'll just <laughs> probably wait for the next, i'll wait for the next <laughs> job coming through i don't need any of this <laughs> then, yeah. but you're driven to go so of course you, <laughs> your character yeah. ends up going or it would have been very That's short it. game but you, you know you're playing you know often you sort of you're playing people who maybe are a little broken or who mm -hmm. are a little want to find themselves in situations like that i often tell my players when we're going into a campaign is you know pick a character who might make some bad decisions um <laughs> yeah that's fun with uh with call of Cthulhu. you know you're sort of encouraged to a little bit because even if you start off, um, you know, perfectly normal, you sure as hell ain't gonna end up perfectly normal, mm -hmm. and that's a really fun, you know, little journey to to get to role play. Yeah. Um, is you know what happens when someone starts seeing things that like, you know, that would give you you know some serious you know mental health issues that would give you some you know some PTSD, some you know send you into shock. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, like th these are things that in our in our you know modern life, you know. Blessfully, blessfully, often don't have to deal with. Mm. Um, you know, you're not going to see uh, you know, bodies, <laughs> you know, li right. lying around anytime soon. We live in a you know, blissfully, right. yeah, uh, relatively peaceful, <laughs> yeah, peaceful time. It, whereas, you know, the other thing about characters in Call of Cthulhu is that they're usually it's a period piece, so you're set twenties, nineteen twenties to nineteen thirties, right? And so you've got a generation of people who may have gone through some terrible, terrible times. You know, you're, you're looking at the periods of World War One and World War Two. So you know, if you're playing a uh, a man, it's likely you might have been in a trench, you yeah. know, and so maybe you already have you know suffered greatly. Mm -hmm. Um, and so yeah, so they're not modern people, I guess, in the in the same in the same way. It's uh, you know, people were very interesting and different back then, and experienced totally different world events and. You, know, you or I have right, um, right. So you're going into it thinking, okay, what has this character maybe seen, maybe done, maybe you know lived through? Um, you know, pretty much everyone around that time was not having a great time. You know, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I so, so it was, uh, mm -hmm. and, and also a totally different like access to information than we have now uh, about what's yeah. going on in the world. You mm -hmm. know, um, and a totally different understanding of science and reason and. Things that we take for granted, but right, you know, really, there are things that can't be explained in 1920 that, right. you know, won't be explained until years and years later. So there's a lot of things that play into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, if we go back to like talking about like the idea of space and the cosmos and all of that, right. um, yeah, it, it's big and it's it's vast and scary. But at the same time, the more I understand it the less it is scary for me. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and so I can kind of understand that like even you know, like even the short relatively short span of time between like the twenties and today, which, you know, seems like right. forever, but it's in the grand scheme of things. Just that amount of new technology and new information that comes along, we feel a lot better informed about how things work. Right, right. And just that feeling but at the, but then at the same time and tell me if you if you agree with this i feel yeah. like cosmic horror still stands up even in the modern day because of yeah. how vast it can be like if right, you right. set it in the modern day i think yeah. it can still be scary yeah, uh, yeah. even though we know more yeah absolutely there's uh there's actually a book for Call of Philly Seventh Edition, which i think is uh Sandy Peterson's Modern Horrors or something like that. I have to find a title. But yeah, mm -hmm. you know, you could do it in sci-fi. You could do it modern day. I've seen it done. Uh, all periods. And that, I think that's maybe why Lovecraft uh, remains so successful in a sort of sin or renaissance uh, resurgence of 
interest is because I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think cosmic horror and that sort of existential horror is sort of something that we as humans always fear, no matter what time we're in. And you're right, the more we understand it in a way, the more terrifying it is, you know, yeah. um, it's yeah. like, oh God, you know, the terrifying discoveries right. about dark matter are made every week. And I look yeah. at that and I think, oh God, what if that is Cthulhu? You know, <laughs> what, if, what, if, what if that stuff is going on and we yeah. never know? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, even like you were talking about like alien, like that's actually set like right. in a science fiction, like fantasy setting in, in yeah. the, in the future, but you can still have like a Cthulian monster because the xenomorphs kind of are. Um, <laughs> And and they can be terrifying even then, even though you yeah. theoretically are way are know so much and have explored the cosmos, you know. Uh, knowing is different from experiencing, isn't it? You know. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, that's the thing. Is it, it, it's still terrifying. <laughs> you know, the world, the world is at any point in in time where we're worried, we're concerned, and that's why that stuff sort of works quite well as a theme. Is 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 quite good, easy to draw upon in some ways. Yeah. Right, you know, things that are almost outside of of the universe that you even understand in in the right, spaces right. that are, yeah. Uh, Alex, even though he is currently waging a war with his computer, God bless. Yes, yeah, so, well, you know, Alex has had a long running war with his computer, and uh, I don't know who's winning, but <laughs> doesn't feel like him right now. <laughs> not not at the moment, right now. He's he's losing the battle, but he won't lose the war. Um, he he did ask um how Cthulhu works as an idea not necessarily as an actual monster but how cthulhu actually works as an idea well i suppose the sort of general premise is um there is this ancient alien which crash landed on earth <laughs> uh before we you and i and sort of modern civilization came around we're sort of talking Sort of conspiracy esque, like you know, did aliens actually build uh, the pyramids? Sort of stuff, right? Um, or, or even before that, you know, uh, pre civilization, these beings and gods were around, that, right? You know, you and I don't understand, and then eventually they fell asleep and went into stasis, and now we've forgotten that knowledge, and it's only lost. It, you know, it's only available in these ancient texts and you know, ancient ruins and stuff like that, and deep under the sea. And there are people who are looking to access that sort of infinite knowledge that this being has in exchange for, you know, various misdeeds and terrible, terrible things. Um, okay. So it's often the pursuit for knowledge that leads people to insanity and Call of Cthulhu and specifically, you know, for uh, Cthulhu. You know, Cthulhu itself is sort of it's popularized and maybe more so than it should be because Cthulhu is sort of a minor creature, I suppose, in in the broad span of the Lovecraft universe. Mm. So, you know, you've got all sorts. You've got Dagon, you've got, um, you know, Hastur, the king in yellow in Carcosa. Mm. Um, Cthulhu is sort of the one that's become popularized because of all the, you know, the tentacles and the, the image of the deep sea creature. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. But there's actually a lot more to Call of Cthulhu than Cthulhu, Cthulhu. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. which is you know, which is strange to say, but um, right, sort of just how, how you know how it got popular, I guess. Um, I guess the the thing I always had a question about, and maybe this is one of those things that we're not supposed to know, is why right. why is Cthulhu always such a dick about things? <laughs> like, <laughs> like I don't know his motivation. <laughs> well, yeah, you're right. I mean, that that's arguably something that we may never know. Yeah, what do these creatures want? Why are they doing? you know what they're doing what does cthulhu want it might change but that i guess the other thing is that we humans are so short-lived that we we our motivations are very sort of short-term um in terms of okay i want knowledge i want power i want to live forever i want to know everything cast spells or you know, whatever it may be <laughs> in uh you know, in lovecraft fiction but these things are older than the earth itself they're aliens they don't have the same sort of you know, if they're asleep for a millennia, it wouldn't matter to them. That might be a short nap. What are their true aims? Does it have anything to do with Earth? Does it have, you know, yeah, that's the fun thing. As a, as... Are we inconsequential? Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, we're totally inconsequential. You know, tiny little, you know, beings to them. This is their world, maybe they think. That's the fun thing as the Keeper, uh, you know, is maybe, you know, one of these Elder Gods has a little plan. Um, but it's it's almost a bit like uh, if you're familiar with like the Elder Scrolls, uh, oh, yeah. uh, Shiogorath, 
um, you know, the, the 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 mad Daedric prince is yeah, that's sort of a similar, you know, thrust um and mm-hmm. sort of Lovecraftian inspired is well, yeah. the answer might be you have no idea why these why these things want what they want or why they want them. Yeah. Um and yeah. we may never know. And that's mm-hmm. uh that's also terrifying because you know, we as humans want the answer to things. We want to know why people do what they do, why these things are doing what they're doing, but uh, yeah, maybe we never will. Yeah, it's interesting that you you equate it to like uh, Elder Scrolls because I remember like when you have to, when you have those quests where you actually have to deal with the gods, right, right? And most of the time you're like, I have no idea what you're getting at, dude. <laughs> <Like, laughs> why are you doing this? Yeah, it's it's sang it's sanguine who had that whole quest in, uh-huh. in Skyrim where it's just like he he gets you drunk and then you're just like on the side of a road and you have to like relive everything that you did in the night of debauchery <laughs> and the only reason he did it was like it's fun <laughs> this was just yeah, fun yeah. for me i mean <laughs> exactly yeah. i don't care if i mean it negatively affected your life sorry <laughs> right i mean yeah, you know this idea that there might be a you know a, a, a nice merciful god is uh you know kind of laughable i think if there <laughs> probably was you know were beings like gods uh, around they're probably yeah. you know pernicious evil uh you know they're not they're not here to help us yeah. i think it's almost more terrifying if uh if they literally do not think about us at all at all right yeah <laughs> it's just yeah. like we're we just happen to be here they're around doing whatever they want and we're just kind of in the way <laughs> right right yeah we just happen to be inhabiting some of the spaces that they're in yeah and uh you know, it's almost sub subconscious for them that you know that they're doing these schemes and plans and yeah uh, and whatnot. And uh, humans are drawn to them like you know moths to a flame because what if horrifyingly they are gods? You know, what mm-hmm. if our understanding of gods is basically you know they're creatures yeah. from uh, Cthulhu mythos, things that we can't understand? Who knows? Yeah, that's the that's the fun thing. Who? What if Godzilla is actually a literal god? It and could happen. Could, yeah, could be true. Being I good. mean, it's equally. I mean, I'd say statistically, it's probably equally as plausible as anything that we sure. humans have come up with for religion, right? It's like it's, it's just a we book. Can actually, look at yeah, exactly. Right, right. It's, 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 you know, and if the movies have taught me anything, it's like we we are equally incapable of really doing anything in that situation. Right. Something I'm really interested in uh, when it comes to the system itself, and I find it very different than almost every other RPG I've seen, Mm. is the way character progression works, because it's practically in reverse. Yeah, like, like yeah. I'm used to character systems where, uh, okay, I get experience and I level up and then I get more yeah. abilities and I get more power. In Cthulhu, it's like, I just want to make sure that I don't end up a pile of goo on the floor by the yeah. end. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. So you've got, you know, you've got your uh, basic skills similar to a game like, uh, you know, D&D, you know, but you also have this this sanity score, this pool that can be drained and in some circumstances can be, you know, uh, restored. Um, And the more sanity that you lose, Mm -hmm. the crazier your, you know, your character starts acting, the more, you know, hallucinations they might start to experience, the more... Mm -hmm. Uh, but on the other hand, they're more in touch with the Eldritch they might be. Um, so there are there's a Cthulhu Mythos score, which in the game starts at zero. Mm. But the more things that you experience, the more things that you learn, this score actually begins to tick upwards um, while your sanity is going down. <laughs> so there's this fun sort of juggling act, uh, you know, aside from just your health, you know, in, in, in D&D, or you're worried about is your health score. Right. As a secondary, uh, you know, sort of like mental... It's a bit like in games like Amnesia or Dark Descent, where you've got to manage that, uh, you know, factor. Which, sure. And as as it, as it drains, you know, your vision starts going blurry and weird, and yeah, uh, and and whatnot. Um, but yeah, yeah it, you know, it's very different. It's about surviving. It's not necessarily about getting better as a person or as as a statistically better in terms of oh, I'm better at swinging a sword, I'm better at firing a bow. It's well, you know, you can get better at doing things like that in Call of Cthulhu. But mm. most of the time, that's not going to be the case. You can, you know, quote-unquote sort of level up in terms of being able to improve skills and whatnot. But right. really that's sort of secondary in the game. Uh, your character sheet is, for all intents and purposes, really going to end up quite similar um, from the beginning of the game to the end of the game, uh, okay. aside from that, from that sanity score. Um, right. right. It's a lot more about the role-playing in terms of okay what does what do i look like at sanity score of 70 compared to sanity score of 30 
you know, how do I act? What am I, what am I afraid of? And you can gain these, you know, uh, they're called temporary and permanent insanities. Basically, mm. you could become deathly afraid of, uh, you know, of, of blood, uh, you know, the fear of blood. <laughs> or you could, you know, uh, when you get in a enclosed space, suddenly, you know, you start losing it. Uh, yeah. And whatnot. And that gets really, really fun to play for the, for the player characters who get to, you know, maneuver these characters around because while in a game like dungeons and dragons statistically you might be changing a lot you know you're moving their numbers up and down you're increasing your sure. stats and whatnot the character doesn't necessarily in the rule set of the game change in nature in their in the way that they act in the way that they think mm. whereas uh by necessity in call of fulu you're gonna start accruing these you know different personality traits these different obsessions and fears um, and that really starts to change what a, how a character acts. And yeah. uh, when you get a, some characters, some players who really love to, to role play, watching five people all go insane together and their relationships <laughs> change and their, mm -hmm. you know, their, uh, their motivations begin to shift and change and the things that they say and do, it becomes really fascinating and, and, and a lot different, a uh, much different experience than a traditional fantasy role playing game. And now am I right in thinking that like in in D&D &D and a lot of those other systems there's a pretty strong combat focus a lot of the time is that right. it, is that really even a focus in Cthulhu? No, not really. Okay. Combat is uh yeah, combat is pretty darn deadly in the mm. sense that he, you know, you can probably don't do it. You're sort of one one to two shots away from death at any combat scenario. So running away is uh, is my advice if you get, running, if any of your listeners away. are going to play this game at home uh Run yeah away. every Getting, time <laughs> yeah. yeah that's pretty much it i mean yeah there are fights you can win there are uh, you know usually with mortal enemies that you can you know try and succeed with but yeah i mean the combat is deadly as hell yeah and for good reason you know because it, it tries to simulate real life sure. uh, and you know guess what if you get shot yeah, you're not getting. You know, most of the time, nope. you're not feeling like getting up again, and you know, uh, you can't, uh, you yeah. know, down a health potion throw, and start throw some dirt you know, on it around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it'll be right. fine. Go you know, uh, yeah, it, it does try to simulate real, yeah. you know, yeah. real people. Uh, we're playing very much mortals, very much normal humans, yeah. more so than heroes. Yeah, right. Yeah, an alien creature erupts out of a painting. What's your normal right. response? <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, Probably if you not pick up a sword. <laughs> <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. So if I'm not really focused on combat, what what are some of like the skills that I actually want to utilize in in Cthulhu? What am I actually picking up? Yeah, yeah. And there are actually a lot of skills in this game. Mm. Um, it, compared to D and D, uh, Call of Cthulhu is a D100 system first of all, rather than a D20 system, meaning oh. that you're rolling. 2d10s and you're trying to roll equal to or lower than your score okay and so it's one of those sort of games that you're going to be failing skill checks quite quite a fair bit very much like real life <laughs> you're going yeah. to be failing upwards yeah uh, more so than succeeding in every task like you do but a few a few are much more useful than others there are things like there's a farming skill there's a jump skill which you know sometimes comes into play but you know rarely Right. Uh, so you're looking at skills like spot hidden, which is the perception check of the game, which mm -hmm. is probably the number one most rolled skill in the game because there's, like I say, a lot of mystery, a lot of investigation, uh, a lot of sort of searching rooms for objects, um, and you know trying to spot things when they're coming at you. So that's good. And then you know the, there are fighting skills like your fighting brawls, your firearms, your rifles, which obviously come in pretty handy when you get in a in a bit of a tight spot but th there are so many skills in the game you can play a doctor you can play a you know a soldier yeah, if you wanted or you could play you know a, a secretary um a journalist you know and and it basically has enough skills in the game to be able to fulfill any you know real life character archetype that you could think of which you know it, it is a little complex it is uh, a little less accessible than a than a D, &D 5e but if you spend sure. you know, a couple hours thinking about it you're not trying to min max your character in the same way um, <laughs> right they don't right. need to be an awesome fighter you know if you are pay playing a journalist just take you know skills that would work for that you know or if you're playing a doctor take a, you know the first aid the medicine stuff um and you're going to be terrible at everything else you you know, there's no way to be an all-rounder in a game like call of cthulhu because right. in real life you know people aren't excellent at 
they are excellent athletes and excellent doctors and excellent scientists and you know excellent <laughs> musicians and they're excellent you know there are a few people like that but, but, oh, but we hate time, those you know, people <laughs> But we hate those people, and you know they, they should be killed. Yes, uh, by should, an eldritch god. Yes, um, <laughs> and you know what? Let them pick on it. It's fine. <laughs> exactly. Let them have it. Let them have it. There's more to go around for the rest of us. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it, you're you're trying to just come up with, you know, a, a role playing character. And so, I like to think of a concept first of all, and just sort of like try and be good at that one thing, mm-hmm. and sort of average like a human is at the rest of stuff because there's no way to to do it all and of course you know it is fun to to get a uh it, with your group a wide variety of okay i'm going to play the doctor i'll be the soldier and this that and the other yeah, yeah, yeah. because then everyone gets their own little niche to do you know sure. um that's that's the fun thing where if, you know i feel like sometimes when i'm playing D and you know if i'm playing a paladin i feel like i'm hitting everything and i'm also you know healing everyone and i've got a pretty yeah. good chance of persuading someone to do something i've got a pretty good chance of knocking down a door you know yeah in, in, in color cthulhu it's like i'm not the guy to knock down that door you know we'd better get the one the one guy who can you know who's the weightlifter in our team yeah uh, yeah to do this for us so sure. um have, have fun with the concept and sort of be aware that it's you know it's going to be a process of sort of failing upwards and running away a lot sure sure <laughs> and working together you know that's the fun thing there's a lot of teamwork in in solving mysteries yeah um yeah. no one is the you know just the poirot who, who figures it all out you know oh, <laughs> everyone's yeah, sure. sort of uh sure you know trying to work together well that, that's kind of nice though the idea of um you know if you have characters that are more specialized it really does encourage everybody right. to work together in more in more ways yeah yeah because because sometimes when I, i'm playing uh, uh you know D uh it, in at least the one campaign that i'm in I, sometimes i'm like i could probably take this myself like like i'm pretty awesome you know would, i'm level 10 the rest yeah. of the party would be great but i'm pretty confident i can handle right this right situation. right and i you know and uh, I can't. that's the thing with D D 5 is you know hmm. i think it, it does a really great job, especially at early level. I've been pretty deadly. Uh-huh. Um, but I do sense, yeah, I've been playing in a couple of campaigns. We're all level sort of 10 now. And so I'm thinking, oh, yeah. well, you know, we're all pretty good at this now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> at, at adventuring, all the tasks that come yeah. with this. By the time you um, get to like 10 or 11, yeah, you're, you're kind yeah. of hard to take down. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're, right. You're pretty, you're pretty deadly at that point. Yeah, whereas, you know, in, in Call of Cthulhu, you are always human yeah. and a real person. <laughs> you know, And like, I might get a little bit better, you know, by going to the gym every day, sure. But mm. in a Call of Cthulhu campaign, you don't have the time to start, you know, yeah. working out and get a science degree. And no, <laughs> no, no, any no. other. It's, uh, you know, a Call of Cthulhu campaign might take place over a week. And then you're all dead, you know, or you're all, yeah. you're all run away in, yeah. in a mental institution, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, that's the that's the thing, is that it feels like you, you have so much more to lose than you might even have to gain. Right, right, system. yeah. Like, you were talking about that, that kind of duality when you, you have your sanity system. Is, yeah. Like, let's just say, just out of curiosity, I'm like, yeah. you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to just go batshit insane. I'm just gonna. I'm just. I'm just. You know, oh, there's a term for that. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. I'm just. I'm just gonna go. Whatever the term is. What is the term? <laughs> so, uh, so there's a there's a, a character in uh, Call of Cthulhu, I guess, role playing game lore called Old Man Old Man Henderson. Okay. And Old Man Henderson is this crazy, you know, bad shit, crazy dude who's already lost his mind. Mm-hmm. And he's basically immune to all of the horrific stuff because he's already so crazy. <laughs> he sees an eldritch god and he sort of shrugs his shoulders because he thinks, well, you know, I've been around here for 80 yeah. years and, you know, he's been, uh, you know, this, that, and the other. So, yeah. you know, that that's definitely an option. What, what, what I'd say, though, is it's definitely more fun um, to let yourself go a little crazy yeah uh with with color but it's definitely fun to, to sort of do that little transition and, and usually characters sort of start off around you know high sanity score starts at you know maximum is 100 so yeah you know you're somewhere between 70 and 100 to begin with so the game sort of says when you begin it you're not crazy mostly so you sort of have to role play that that transition a little bit, whether you like it or not. I mean, there are definitely characters, you know, that I've had in in games uh, playing with me who sort of uh, 
you know, m- maybe they're criminals or they've been in the war and like they've seen some horrors, like genuine, you know, horrific mortal horrors. Sure. Um, that that you know you can witness some genuine, you know, horrific you know, situations that do happen to everyday people. You know, and you just have to look around ourselves in the world today to say, well, yeah, you know, there are people who, God, I would be fucked up if I went through that, you know, or <laughs> yeah. if I, yeah. you know, saw that or that happened to me. You know, yeah. there are dreadful things which we as humans can do to one another. Mm-hmm. But that, that is the cosmic element of Cthulhu, which is, okay, well, you've seen mortal horrors, sure. You know, there are mm-hmm. dead bodies, there are, you know, uncountable traumas, I guess, which yeah, yeah. we humans can do to each other. But the cosmic nature, the eldritch nature of this horror is that such which you have never, no human has been able to experience before, and that's why you can't process it. It's inexplicable. Um, yeah, yeah, that's where it gets... That gets fun for me. Sure. Um, sure. There's always a a, a deeper <laughs> insanity to reach a cool Cthulhu until you hit zero, which, by the way, is <laughs> uh, is how you lose control of your character. So oh. if you hit zero sanity in Cool Cthulhu, you don't just die as you would if you get to zero hit points. Yeah. Uh, the keeper, you know, the dungeon master, takes control of your character and tells you what you start to do now. Oh, good. Uh, you've you've lost your character essentially oh. to to the insanities of whatever eldritch god. Oh no. And they are now just a puppet, a plaything for the keeper to, um, hmm. you know, to um, you know, and and often in. Lovecraft fiction that ends in you know like a suicide or uh you know uh, yeah. something crazy that you end up you know, doing to stop the madness from happening sure um, sure so yeah it gets pretty dark it gets, yeah you know, it's uh yeah it's not for the faint of heart it's cool yeah me. i get that lovecraft <laughs> is pretty dark <laughs> as, a, as, a, as an idea my think my thinking though is that like if if i decide that like you know i'm i'm just going insane I'm just I'm, right. I'm I'm coming as close to that zero as I can without actually yeah. going all the way. Is there any benefit to it, really? Like, what can right, yeah. what, what benefits might I actually glean from that? So, the, so the sort of basic rule is: the more you learn, the less your san- you know the more your sanity goes down. Okay. Um, so the more you know truths, essential truths about you know whatever horrific. Uh, entity or scenario or mystery that's happening. If you read a book, for instance, you know it's a big thing about you know reading the Necronomicon, and you, mm-hmm. this book holds the answers to everything. Okay, well, if you want some answers, and you're going to have to, it's going to come at the cost of your you know mental acuity. Yeah. Often losing sanity is something which is okay. The only way to learn this thing is to open this book, is to you know to dive down this rabbit hole, um, and and figure it out. So you know. There are. It's almost a necessity to learn more. Yeah. Um, to drop the sanity down, and like I said, there's this Cthulhu Mythos score, uh, which generally comes if you read a book or a text or you see something horrific or you speak to an elder god. Or, yeah. Heaven forbid. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And then you can start doing spells. You know, there 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 are there is magic in the game. You know, you can oh, yeah. begin to reanimate. Uh, you know, zombies. You can you know kill people with magic. Um, and that's when you're starting to get around the, you know, sanity, <laughs> yeah. low sanity scores. And the fun thing is you can become an NPC in the adventure. Um, when you hit zero sanity, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're often dead. You know, you may mm-hmm. be on the, the villain of the next campaign because most of the uh-huh. villains, the human villains in Call of Cthulhu already have zero sanity or at least, you know, Damn, like close to zero sanity, mm-hmm. and they can now cast magic, and they've grafted other people's flesh onto their skins, and they're casting the red sign about, and Ooh. expect to lose a character or two along the way. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, it's all about the characters we lost along the way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> really yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm uh, I'm totally down for that. But now the thing, like you've you've explained a little bit about how like that reverse progression uh, works when it's when you're running a game. How do you see that? Because I'm going to assume that you've had some players that have played with you with Cthulhu that also played with yeah. you in other systems. Right. Yeah, definitely. How do you see that particular kind of like regression of the character affect the players when they're playing the game? They usually love it. That's <laughs> usually their favorite thing. Um, <laughs> it's mine as well when, when I get to see them do it, you know. <laughs> because, you know, it does sort of, it does let you access your crazy a little bit. Mm-hmm. It does sort of let you think of your character. Okay, well, what they're going to do, and it, and is it going to be the best thing in the situation to help everyone out? Probably not. Yeah, you know, um, you know, I'm going to start. Yeah, you know, I've seen characters, you know, 
start opening books that they know they shouldn't read mm. and start making these fun, you know, these horrific decisions where you as a character or you as a player rather are thinking, oh God, I shouldn't do this. Oh God, why am I doing this? Oh God, open it anyway. You know, um, <laughs> because that's what my character would do. Right. Um, so, you know, it does, it does let you sort of get a different access, uh, you know, aspect to role playing that, you know, usually uh, you might not get to do. And it is fun for the, you know, for you as a player to get the chance to start doing things that maybe you shouldn't do. But, mm. you know, sometimes that that promise of the unknown, the secret, is just too much for you to take, and then you do things that you oughtn't to do. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I think they usually, you know, they usually get a chance to to do something a little different. And each time you play Call of Cthulhu, you might go, you know, insane in the game in a slightly different manner or way. Sure. make different decisions you know you could become an arbiter for extreme justice it doesn't necessarily mean that yeah. you're gonna you know but uh you know we've we've played with catholic priests who at zero, you know sanity 10 you know start flaying the skin off people who they who are giving confessions to you right. know like there are all sorts of different you know uh, uh ways in which people might you know start sure uh losing it each time you play a different character we all so, process um, things differently <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> sometimes it's free playing yeah, you, know, it's, you never it's know. normal <laughs> who are we to judge um but, uh, uh i imagine especially if you're really into the role-playing aspects um yeah. and and not maybe so much the crunch but really like the the role-playing part mm -hmm. of it that's got to be really interesting because so often you're just watching as your character gets better and better at things watching your character absolutely dive down the spiral <laughs> <laughs> right, that's it yeah it's it, it is sort of freeing in a way mm -hmm. like it, it is just for you a little bit thinking okay this character's doomed like yeah. going into it you're in the headset of thinking all right they're not going to become awesome and win and defeat all the bad guys and whatnot maybe they're going to become the bad guys yeah. and how can i get to that place sure and um yeah that's what call of cthulhu is for i think um it's for some sort of anti-heroes it's for very you know human characters and heaven knows that you know we humans have a ton of flaws um yeah. which when they get pushed to the extreme can be really interesting so mm -hmm. yeah definitely have fun with that going into yeah. the campaign you're not gonna win you know you're only gonna get worse <laughs> in some ways but getting worse is sometimes more fun than getting better <laughs> it is unnerving the idea that almost anybody like it no matter how sane you think you are when right. pushed to the right degree you may yeah. end up going down that road. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the, the you know, the horrific human condition. Yeah. Is, uh, you know, we're quite well protected nowadays, I guess, from, you know, horrors like, <laughs> horrors sure. like that. But we are quite capable of horrific things when it when push comes to shove. Right, 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 right. You know, um, we're, you know, you only have to look, you know, a little bit back in history or even to current day events and parts of the world where you think, <laughs> wow, you know, how, how does someone get there? And that's, that's right. really interesting to, to start to, you know, to work your way backwards from. Right. Um, right. You know, people can start off as lovely and as well-intentioned. Mm. Um, and then you get thrust into, you know, incredible scenarios. And, you know, there is that animal part to us, which is, okay, survive, you know? Yeah. Yeah. When pushed to an extreme, There's crazy stuff happens. Like, if you think about, like, Twilight Zone, Outer Limits, that kind of thing. Yeah, and yeah. Back in the day, there was, there was that Twilight episode was the aliens came to Main Street or something like that, which was like the lights in the neighborhood just all go out. Like just the power goes out. And there's the right, one right. house that has the lights on. <laughs> Everyone goes freaking nuts right. about that yeah. whole thing. And really uh -huh. all that happened is the lights went out. <laughs> like, yeah, and yeah. that's all oh, it yeah. took to push the, the neighborhood over. And that was <laughs> so, one of the scariest episodes for most people because it's like, yeah. Oh wow! It doesn't take anything. <laughs> it's like yeah, we're we're not we're not as far removed from this stuff as uh, I think we'd like to yeah. convince ourselves of. Sometimes I mean, there's you know, looking at the world today, you know, crazy things are happening. Sure, you know, it's it's not so far removed. Yeah. Uh, we're not that far away from it all, and uh, that's terrifying. We uh, we talked a little bit about uh, accessibility uh, before, just compared yeah. to, to some other systems. But if you were looking at somebody who was just picking this this thing up and couldn't tell what it was <laughs> immediately, yeah, how accessible do you think the system is comparative to some of the other ones that are out there? I think more so than uh, a game like D and D Five E, it does require a keeper, a you know a DM who's sort of willing to 
to help out a little bit more than with with some other games. Sure. Um, especially if you've never played a D100 system before, that's kind of a kind of a head fuck to to start getting your, your head around rolling a D100 rather than just rolling a D20 and trying to roll low rather than high is another thing that you have to sort of get your get your head around. Oh, I mean, okay. mm-hmm. yeah, spend spend a bit of time with the book, um, and also just sort of uh, make it known to your your keeper that it's it's new to you. Yeah. Um, and personally, me when I'm uh, running these games is. We just sort of play play fast and loose with the real crunch rules because the rules can actually get pretty crunchy if you if you really want them to. Sure. Our sort of philosophy is we're really interested in a role play. You know, as as a group, we've been kind of role play. We're really interested in just sort of following stories and and, and and characters and seeing where they're going. And if the rules get in your way, don't worry about them. You know, roll roll a, roll a dice and see what happens. Sure. You know, if you roll good, that's you know, let's figure it out. So yeah, I wouldn't get too too concerned about the crunch, despite there being quite a lot of it in the game. If mm-hmm. you watch any of you know our seasons that are on uh, yeah YouTube or Twitch or whatever, you know, <laughs> there are people in the comments say you know flagging us up on the rules and, and we're saying you know well, yeah. Yeah, but it's a fun story. You know, <laughs> right. like we're we're right. just trying to trying to make it work for a for a group of us, and we play with a lot of new players uh, in the current season. We've got two or three new players. Yeah. Uh, that have never played, um, you know, a D100 system before. But it really isn't too difficult when you just start rolling dice. And another thing about the game is that because there isn't a whole lot of combat, mm-hmm. um, there aren't a whole lot of rolls and skill checks that you have to make for things. Um, most of the things that you're going to be asking to do to your keeper are like tasks that you as a human could perform without necessarily needing to roll the dice. Right. Um, you know, or, you know, if I want to look around a room, do I you know have to uh, you know uh, roll to see if there's a chair in your room no of course you don't sure. you know there's some things which are you know which which are a given yeah so you know i i'd my advice is to sort of dumb it down a little bit with the call of Cthulhu 7th edition stuff because yeah uh for me it gets just a little crunchy and that sort of gets away from where sure. personally i find a lot of the fun uh is at which is right. with the role play stuff so right, right. but yeah definitely pick up that you know investigator's handbook for the 7th edition uh you know there are there's some great tutorials on uh you know youtube and probably in podcast format as well if you're mm. interested yeah um yeah we actually have a core Cthulhu some edition podcast uh on the encounter roleplay network which you go listen to if you like podcasts yes um and, and, it, and it's the same you know same sort of vibe over there where it's like well let's make the story happen and together as a group, you know, if one of us can't figure out what a role is, the other one's going to help the other guy out, you know? Yeah, pick up, pick, make sure that you have the player's handbook. Probably don't pick up the Necronomicon. That's No, nah, well, I mean, yeah. I would advise doing that, but, you know, yeah. I'm not the right guy to ask. <laughs> it's hard to find a copy nowadays. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can help you out. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, thanks. Thanks for me up with that. <laughs> um, when we had uh, Satine Phoenix on the show, she mm-hmm. was talking about, like, it, it, it's like a two-minute role for her. Like, if, if we uh-huh. get stuck on a rule and we cannot figure it out in two minutes, we just make a decision about what we're doing and right, just right. we'll figure it out later. Because, really, we don't want to get too bogged down. <laughs> like Absolutely. And, and, I mean, there are enough, uh, you know, uh, uh, pun-based sort of role with it, uh, you know, uh, yeah. Twitter accounts, uh, podcasts, <laughs> YouTube, yeah. uh, you know, uh, yeah. streams to, to tell you that that's definitely a philosophy, which I, I think a lot of people who have been playing games like this for a while share, which is, yeah. you know, does it does it really matter? <laughs> does right. it really matter what, you know, what the book says? Especially if you're on stream, you know? Right, like, right, it's yeah, just, that's it's, it. Yeah, it's like people are watching. Do we really have to spend 15 minutes figuring this out? <laughs> right, right, right. You know, if you personally find that fun, if your group enjoys that, absolutely do it. You know, absolutely look up the rules yeah, if, that, yeah, if sure. that's something that you guys, you know, have fun with. But, sure. you know... Uh, uh, it's 2019. I, I don't have time for that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a lot on my plate. You know, it's, if we uh, can't find the rule in like a few minutes, you know what? We've all got jobs. What's going to you know, work for us? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got stress and anxiety about their real lives here. Let's not bring it into uh, you know the fun time. It's hard to bring a tone of like dark horror when all of a sudden you're like, wait, wait, hold on one second. Cause Hang we, on, we got to look at the rules for a second. <laughs> Figure this yeah, out. Yeah, I can't cramp your style a bit if you're. Uh, the eldritch gods are just off in the corner looking at their watch like okay can we continue <laughs> the story now please right. <laughs> exactly yeah so so you know don't don't get worried uh too much about the rules even if it does seem a little bit intimidating at first because uh yeah like i say i think once you start get playing it, it's a case of pick up those 2d10s shake them up roll them 
and see if you've rolled low enough to you know succeed on your skill check that's how we decide how things happen in our game pretty much um, sure. and if you can't really can't decide on it you know toss a coin <laughs> okay yeah yeah here here's where you need to to finally answer a question for me that i've that I, has been racking my brain ever since i got oh polyhedral dice okay <laughs> i'm i'm looking at my two dice right now i'm looking at my percentile yeah. dice and my 10 okay my 10 die has the zero on it which for me is the 10. yeah and then my percentile dice has two zeros. Is that 0% or 100%? <laughs> so if you roll zeros all over, I think it is 100%. Okay. Um, because otherwise there's no way to get 100%. Um, right. If you go all... Yeah, yeah. So so the... <laughs> yeah, that is confusing, though. Yeah. Um, but one one is your tens, uh, and yeah. the other is the, uh, the, the the other unit. I don't know. Right, the right. It, math it, term it, is flat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Once, once your tens, <laughs> once your ones, I think. But, but now if I roll the, the double zeros on the percentage, but I roll a nine, that's 9%. Right, yes, yes. If you roll zero, zero... Uh, uh, sure. uh, well, zero, yeah... Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah it yeah. is confusing to try and conceptualize. It is. Uh, That's what grab I'm... those dice and yeah, and take a look at them, and it yeah. actually explains this much better than uh, than I'm doing a job of doing. Uh, sure. In the in the book itself, or if you played a game like uh, Warhammer Fantasy or yes. uh, any other D100 sure. uh, based system, they they all do this similarly. Yeah. Um, usually rolling. A zero is good um, because yeah. that means that you're in the tens, right. you know, and you're between zero and uh, and ten. So, sure. and that almost always means a success in a game like Cthulhu. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, if you start rolling those ninety, you think ninety nine is a good score on those dice. Oh, think again, my friend. That's a critical fail. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or a fumble in this game. Yeah, <laughs> that's the big difference. Like, oh, if it only landed on the one, <laughs> it, right, it right, would have yeah. been so much better. It's the difference between a hundred and one percent. <laughs> Exactly. Now, see, for me, like, if you really want to get picky, you could try to get that giant bowling ball they have for the D100. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Just going to, like, roll that and take your chances. But um, you can knock somebody out with one of those. Those are, those are huge. <laughs> They're deadly. It's nice, but it's also kind of... Use of caution. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> use of caution. Understand what you're getting yourself into with that. It's not, not for the faint of heart. Um, you could probably just use that to knock Cthulhu out, really. Yeah. So let's just say, uh, like, you know, you're a player or you're, you know, a, a keeper, let's say, that are starting right. out. And you either, you're either playing Cthulhu or you're, you're playing any kind of game where you want to use a theme that's similar to that. Yeah. What would you say you really need to keep in mind right out of the gate? We even mentioned this earlier, but sort of keep in mind that, it, you know, it's not a traditional fantasy role-playing game. Uh, you're... Players aren't going to come out of this, <laughs> or your characters rather. Hopefully, the players are going to come out. Well, of yeah, the players. Uh, <laughs> if <laughs> you not, you're either. really doing it wrong. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, your characters aren't going to come out of this. Um, you know, probably any better off than they started with it. Right. Um, and also, they're not heroes. You know, they're very much people. So, you know, mm -hmm. try and think of a, a, you know, person, and then try, you know, to figure out what happens to that person as they, you know, see these uh, horrific things. I think at its core, Call of Cthulhu is, is a simpler role-playing game because we very much understand people. Uh, they're easier to relate to, uh, for me, than like a hero sure. in, a, in, a, in, a, in a fantasy story. Uh, so keep that in mind. But go in prepared to be a little scared. You know, go in prepared to be, uh, you know, with a, a shiver down your spine, um, play into it a little bit. Uh, you know, and as a group, figure out what stuff is scary for you what stuff you don't want to touch mm. um and you know each group is different in that way and that's a that's a whole other you know uh, free hour podcast i'm sure yeah. um yeah. <laughs> which you probably already talked about so I'll never these, <laughs> it's, uh, it's okay we have a few other people coming on who <laughs> explain that yeah i'm sure they'll I'll, I'll hand wave that one and they can do yeah, that yeah, yeah. um <laughs> <laughs> we've discussed a little uh, on the show before so it's fine yeah yeah but you know get <laughs> have it go on with an open mind i guess yeah um yeah and uh and, and see where it takes you you're not necessarily going to get all of the answers but that's part of the fun yeah go in with uh, a preparedness to learn some things that maybe you shouldn't and make some decisions that maybe you oughtn't um <laughs> and you know and as a keeper that's just your job to facilitate that everyone's having a fun amount of scaredness right? yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, yeah. you want to be you want to be enjoying yourself a healthy amount of terror. A healthy level of awareness. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, uh, you know, and that, that's the best feeling when you, as a sure. as a keeper, you know, really do scare someone and they're horrified, but you mm-hmm. know, about something, but they're enjoying the fact that they're horrified about yeah. it. You know, they're not. But, you know, oh my God, well, I, you know, I haven't slept for, for seven days, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, oh my God, well, you know, I was thinking about that the other night and that was, you know, that was horrific. That's a great feeling um, <laughs> because that's what you're going for right. and that's what they want, you know, hopefully yeah. as, a, as a player. You want to be a little bit scared. Yeah, pick up that book, get some uh, some deal on hundreds and, mm-hmm. uh, and see where it takes you. Yeah. That's my advice. <laughs> uh, Alex did actually have one other question, but I'm pretty sure he was not serious about this. Um, he's, his, <laughs> oh God. his question was, <laughs> What happens if you kill the Void and Cosmos? <laughs> <laughs> then you become the Void and Cosmos. Oh, well. Hey, you know what? That really worked. It's like the Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when you look into the Void, the Void looks back. That's right. <laughs> Sometimes when you kick Santa Claus off the roof, you become the Santa Claus. If you, exactly. yeah, if you pull on the tentacles of Cthulhu, you become the Cthulhu. It's very important to know. <laughs> this is how this is how we determine what the new Elder Gods are going to be. Who knows? Maybe that's how it, maybe that's how it works. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> so so you uh, so you have a, a Cthulhu campaign going on right now. Mm. Okay. It's called Tentacle Tuesday, and believe it or not, it is on a Tuesday. Uh, every uh, Tuesday at two p.m. Eastern on Twitch.tv forward slash encounter role play mm. uh but if you guys are into the podcast stuff then we've got um tomes and tentacles which is uh on our podcast feed such out into itunes or, or i don't know any anywhere on the internet and you'll probably find something uh <laughs> resembling our podcast sure. uh we've got a, a, a new season of that coming out soon actually um so i'm very very excited uh to get to show that one off to everyone because we've been recording that for the past couple of months and uh our keeper is uh I'm not a keeper on that one. Our keeper is Ben Counter, who mm. uh, who wrote a bunch of uh Warhammer forty K novels. He's a great author and a really, really good keeper. A lot of my inspirations come from from Ben. And oh, uh yeah, that's a that's a descent into into insanity with uh some of our best friends uh from Encounter Roleplay and uh, sort of plays a bit like an audio drama. So if oh, you nice. like um you know sort of old school uh, audio dramas and, and horror stuff then sure. it's kind of the experience you'll get over there. So nice. Plenty of Cthulhu stuff, and and like I say, there's there's probably a hundred hours or so of content on our YouTube channel. Oh yeah, uh, with with Cthulhu, it's it's sort of my favorite game. Uh, so we've been playing it a lot over the past couple of years. What shenanigans have they gotten into so far this season? Oh, at the moment, they've just um, uncovered a mystery on a small little island that they've been trapped on. And they've now, uh, without spoiling too much, descended into a place which is not Earth. Uh, and uh, which the king in yellow has to, uh, or he who should not be named, I shouldn't have just said his name, I'll get in real trouble, uh, <laughs> <laughs> reigns supreme. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's uh, based on the Robert E. Chambers uh, short story, The King in Yellow. A lot of good stuff uh, over there. And, and honestly, if, if anyone's interested in just learning a little bit more about uh, Cthulhu or Lovecraft a lot, then... Pick up the, um, the Lovecraft. There's a bunch of anthologies which I've seen and actually uh, yes. uh, have picked up, uh, which are great for just short stories, uh, horror, and give you a great vibe oh, yeah. on what this stuff is all about. Um, this is a great entryway into the, getting into the Cthulhu stuff. Is uh, reading some of those short stories or uh, podcasts, audio books, yeah. all that good stuff. Yeah. So uh, there's a ton of content out there, and it's it's never been more sort of. Uh, popular than it is at the moment so now's a great time to get involved yeah uh, a lot of the audiobooks too i've i've found out are are pretty much just open source now because it's been yeah, so long so, old, yeah. so you can you can pretty much find them very easily uh on the internet now because the the works since they date so far back are now basically public domain uh so, yeah. and 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 it's it's great so it's really easy to if you're interested in in lovecraft or lovecraftian horror it's actually very easy to find his works yeah. out there and video games as well, you know, yeah. those that we mentioned earlier, but there's, oh, yeah. uh, there's a new one out as well, which I think is called Stygian uh, Descent. Uh, I mean, just, yeah, the, just a ton of great stuff. Yeah, and I think that there was one that was like the Drowned City. I, I haven't played yeah, that. Yeah, so I think, is that out? I don't know, at the time recording. I think that's out. Maybe it's out. I, you know, I'm, I'm bad with video games. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think, I, 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 <laughs> no, I think it came out earlier this year. Uh, Sinking City, The Sinking City. Which Sinking I think is, ba- is based a little bit. You're on right. Hulu. It came out, yeah. And it, yeah, it came yes. out earlier this year. I have not played it. 
but I heard it was yeah, very that's... good. I heard it was very good. Yeah, yeah. That's the the sort of Innsmouth stuff, which is uh, mm. ever popular in yeah. Uh, yeah, Lovecraft fiction. So, uh, so much cool stuff out there that Chaosium, that publishes a seventh edition, and uh, the the Cthulhu IP are sort of working on right now. So, and uh, now in its seventh edition, yeah. Two more editions than D and D. It's yeah. twice as good. Yeah, it's two more editions. Than, it's two more editions than almost all the systems. Actually, <laughs> pretty much. A lot yeah. of them are in fifth edition, but this is Pathfinder's oh, barely got two editions. This I is uh, yeah, <laughs> five this more is editions. Pretty impressive how they did. <laughs> Apparently, from like sixth to seventh, that was like a ten-year gap. So they had a lot yeah. of time to work on this, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah yeah it's a, it's uh it's a really good book yeah. and uh even if you just want to take a look at the pictures and the artwork in there it's it's well worth it because that book is uh mm -hmm. splendid splendid in its uh production yes yeah. it is it is splendid in its production and it is a very unique rpg like for me the general idea of um you know my character is probably more likely to end up worse off than, than they started. Right. <laughs> is uh is just a a really interesting thing for me and I, you don't really see that in other systems. So Will, if people wanted to yeah. uh find you on oh, God. the inter <laughs> <laughs> if people want, it's happened maybe, before and i'll soon <laughs> if people, i mean if they want to find you on the internet ah, okay well yeah the internet yeah, right, if they wanted to find you on the internet you don't have to give me your home address just but, but on places where you prefer they look for you right right where, where could they go uh yeah absolutely um you know head over to um uh, twitter uh, if you do the social media, we're at Encounter RP, and it basically is a portal to all of the stuff over there. Or you can go to our website, which is uh, EncounterRoleplay.com, and that's also a you know, portal to finding all of the bits and bobs that we do. Uh, if you're interested in the Twitch stuff, it's Encounter Roleplay. Uh, Encounter Roleplay. If you're interested in YouTube, it's Encounter Roleplay. Search into iTunes, Encounter Roleplay. I mean, just just put that name in there, and you'll probably find all of the uh, Cthulhu stuff and all of the other you know uh, stuff oh, that yeah. that we're up to over there. So. Um, yeah, I wouldn't bother following my like my actual account. Just follow the the <laughs> network stuff, and that's where all the cool stuff happens. Right. You don't want to hear my witterings. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> that's my advice. Find it all over there. Excellent, excellent. Uh, and uh, as always, if you want to find any more information about Delve, you can go to delvecast dot com. Check out our Patreon banner. Uh, we have like extended episodes and all sorts of cool stuff there. So check that out. And um, you can find us on uh, every podcast app known to mankind uh there is a and some known not to mankind as and, well yeah it? well you know the funny thing is you know you say that but i literally just like a few weeks ago i got a message uh that that orbital which is one of the podcasts that i do uh -huh. it had been picked up by a service i never knew even existed that's like the Ooh. number one podcast app in India. And I was like, I didn't know. I didn't That's ask. Cool. <laughs> but apparently they <laughs> wanted to let me know that, yes, indeed, it's there now. <laughs> and it's like, all right, I don't care. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> um, but, you know, the ones that you might be familiar with, the iTunes, the Google Play, the Spotify, iHeartRadio, we're on those now. You can find us there. Uh, please rate and review and subscribe. We always like stars. You put five of them in a row. I love that a lot. That makes my day. <laughs> um, and uh, you can also find us on Twitter as well. I'm at Satanium. Uh, Alex is at EXP Limited. And the show is at Delve Podcast. So you can check us all out there. Uh, again, I just want to thank Will for coming on and uh, giving no problem. so generously of your time and knowledge. I, I appreciate that tremendously. Oh, it was learned at a great cost to my sanity, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Your sanity score when you started with me was like around a 70, and now it's about right, a 10. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've still got a little in a tank, yeah. so I should be fine. Yeah. yeah, well, you know what? That's a typical experience with most of the guests that come on the show, so don't feel bad. <laughs> don't feel bad at all. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, no, it was an absolute pleasure to be here. And, uh, thanks so much for, uh, for hosting this and uh, having me on. Oh, yes, absolutely. And uh, so for this very spooky episode of the show, Ooh. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you on the next time. Ah! I don't know why I did that voice. <laughs> I probably won't do it again. Yeah. You've just done it. Oh, damn it. <laughs> well, I lied. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>